Hi, it's Dave Bloxham with Beyond Guitars back again with Mike's dad's Gibson Master Tone. And today we have some news. I discussed it with Mike and he agreed with all the problems the neck has. We're going to go through the neck. I know a lot of people would say, hey, they're purists and they wouldn't do anything to it. But uh, honestly, when you touch this banjo, you feel like you need a tetanus shot. And uh, the, the finish is actually flaking off. It's coming off in little bits and pieces. So it's pretty much had it, I'll tell you. And these frets are worn down to the bone. So uh, we're going to make it playable. And you know, you just wouldn't want to play it with bare wood. Uh, even those who make speed necks, I've done speed necks. Uh, you don't really leave them bare. You always finish it with something, maybe true oil or, uh, um, you know, something like uh, China wood oil, which I use uh, used on my own banjo. Uh, that worked out really great. Um, and then uh, there's uh, boiled linseed oil, those kinds of things, which are real thin and they're evaporating oils is what they are. And uh, so they're a little different, but they leave a nice smooth, um, non-sticky surface. Uh, but you always want to put something on the wood and we've got a lot of bare wood on this banjo uh, We're gonna clean the pot and everything which I do about annually on my own instruments anyway I just take them apart and clean them and put them together. Sometimes I'll just change the head every couple years, maybe uh, You know and uh, I just like to keep up with it. I don't uh, think that all the DNA that's on it It really should uh, stay there forever. So um, that's just my philosophy and I know we're not changing anything fundamental about it it's going to keep its tone ring it's going to keep its resonator and its original neck and everything the frets are just worn out and that's the way it is with instruments they do wear out and have to be replaced upon occasion and this has 60 years uh, plus of occasions on it so we're going to do that so aside from arguing uh, the case mike has agreed to do everything that uh, we talked about so we're going to get going on this right after this All right, so I do a lot of talking and I've noticed that my videos tend to be rather lengthy. So uh, I think this time what I'd like to do is just move through the disassembly on this and I will chit chat as I go, but I'm not going to stop or anything. I'm just gonna go back to where I did, uh, where I was the other day and take the resonator off. And you know, this resonator is really in great shape. It's absolutely perfect. Um, aside from finish wear, uh, it looks, uh, it's perfectly intact. There's nothing to do on it, and we're not going to do anything on it. Um, so that's that. And so the resonator stays the way it is. And, uh, you know, I know when I played it last time, it bothered me a little bit that I didn't tune it very well. I still have a new container. I uh, can't get these anymore. I'll find something different. But I've got one for this uh, project, so... Uh, little Dollar Tree special there. Uh, I didn't tune it very well, but I, I don't really have to tune it well to hear how the pot sounds and just the tone is what I wanna hear, how it projects and everything. So um, yeah, it was out of tune. All right, so I'm gonna get some close-ups here and just, just go at it and take this thing apart. So if you saw my previous video, you know how difficult it is to turn the tuners and how I'm a little afraid I may spin a tuner. So there's really only one way to take these strings off uh, and I'm just gonna cut them here. It's a very loud pop, but it doesn't hurt anything. There's our old, uh, our old bridge. I'll just put it in the box and uh, not use it again. But uh, Mike can have it back if he likes. So we're gonna get at it. We've got all these strings here to take off the tuning machines and I'm just going to unwrap them one at a time and pull them out. Oh, there's one more wrap on it. I thought I was done. Just get them unwrapped. This way I don't have to turn them anymore. I'm gonna get those off of here. And those are all off. I've got the fifth string tuner, which oh, just fell out. That was nice. I hadn't had the strings off before, but we'll address that and I'll tell you what I do to make those work better and keep them in. Yeah, let's keep it original, right? So that falls out. <laughs> 
Nope. Uh, we're gonna, okay, there's a good shot of some dirt. Wanna see that? Here, let's get that up close here. You wanna keep it that way? Yeah, I just, I, I don't know, comments from people saying they wouldn't do a thing. Well, I may have to get a tetanus shot before I'm done. Well, I'm not gonna talk about that anymore. Anyway, uh, tailpiece is held on with one screw. And as I said, you don't tor torque that screw down and the tailpiece is out. And I'll just get the loop ends out of that tailpiece. You know, this is, a lot of people will show you how they deal with strings by winding them up. This is something I like to do sometimes. Wind it into a really tight loop and just get them all wound up. And they can spring out and surprise you. So to avoid that, I get this nice loop. And then when I cut the strings, I have little short pieces. And uh, they're not very big. So I've just got a bunch of little short pieces now and they go right in the trash and they won't. Strings have a tendency to jump out at you like a snake. And uh, sometimes you think you get them all and then you notice there's, there's one on the floor still that you didn't get and somehow it snuck out of the little wastebasket. So uh, we'll take a closer look at this tuner and decide whether or not to use it again. Uh, the tailpiece is going to get its nut back and I'll put that in storage. All right, so uh, next thing we're gonna take this neck off, uh, which is pretty easy to do. I've got the uh, wrench. Um, Oh, I don't need the wrench. I've backed these off the last in the last video. I need my little pick though to turn the rods. Get the first rod out, or at least partially out. Sometimes you can't get them out because uh, there's just not enough room. Now you notice the neck has come completely loose. So I'm supporting the pot with my fingers and I'm supporting the neck with my thumb and index just to make sure I've got everything supported and I can back the neck off as I unscrew and that way it comes right off and there's our neck and we're going to work on that outside uh, off of the banjo pot. Now this nut on the outside which was already completely loose comes off. There is a little bracket for the tailpiece. I like to just keep it there and put that nut, that outside nut, back on. And that's ready for storage. And then we've got this one, which I may want to take out the front. If it's a little long, and it kind of seems to be. I don't know, I'm getting it. I'm getting it. There we go. Okay, now there is no um, nut to put on to save these washers. So I need to keep those in my container and not lose them. There they go. Don't lose them. Uh, quarter inch is the size of these um, drum nuts, I guess you'd call them, banjo hook nuts and I'm going to use my cordless screwdriver instead of a heavy duty tool. I like this, uh, it's an older model of a Milwaukee and I really, really like this particular tool and I can just put a socket on it, just a regular socket and uh, just go in reverse and take it off. It doesn't have so much power that I'm gonna hurt anything. Even though removing, when you're removing things, you're really not gonna hurt them anyway. It's got a high and a low, we'll go with high. But this old this old model is great because, you know, the newer ones, uh, when you want to make them operate, you give them a little twist. They've got a miniaturized um, uh, gyroscope in them and they can detect when you're moving it. But I don't like it because I just want to operate it for um, very predictably. So I like the rocker switch that this one has. And there may be others with a rocker switch, but it's the one I've got. So it's the one I'm talking about. So we'll just take all these nuts completely off. 
in my other video, I took them partially off, just enough to loosen the hooks and I could get the hoop off and take the head off and everything. But in this case, I'm going to be cleaning all these parts and uh, get all the uh, funk off of them before I put it back together. Now when you put them on, you put them on more carefully and you tension them evenly. When I'm taking them off, I don't bother with that stuff. I just take them all off. They're not on with so much torque that uh, it will hurt anything. So you think when you relieve one side, it may cause the other side to bind up, but really they're not that tight. So. No problems. The armrest got hooked on my little luthier's mat. <laughs> I've got two to go and my battery goes out. So it's quicker to do this than to even look for another battery, which I do have. But I'm just going to take it off by hand. And that's all of them. Last nut. Now all the hooks ought to come out. I've also got the armrest. The armrest has a nut here. Just pull it all the way out. And there's a piece inside there that uh, just fell out. There it is. That goes with the armrest. So to preserve this, and not lose the pieces. We'll put the screw back in and set that aside. Now all the hooks ought to come out and if they don't, a little gentle persuasion is okay. One on the floor, okay. The rest of these, I think a lot of them have fallen out. I'm just using the plastic side of my little Stumac hammer, which is a fret hammer, but I use it for all kinds of things. Like this. And I like the plastic side because I'm not going to uh, mark the plating with it. Now, the head is completely, completely loose. It has no tension on it at all. So I'll I'll save you some time and uh, come back when I pick all these up. Now I don't know if Mike's dad ever changed the uh, armrest, but uh, it's in good shape. It just needs to be cleaned up. But you know these usually will wear through the plating and will need to be changed. So I suspect that's probably been changed at some point. We'll remove the hoop and that lovely five star head. And we're gonna get rid of that, but I am gonna keep it for now because I wanna take a measurement off of it. Now, we're gonna see how tight this tone ring is, if it's a tight fit or a loose fit. And I'd say it's a snug fit, it's not too tight. It's coming right off here. Just kinda of wedging my fingers in there until until it pops off, which should be, there we go. Tone ring is real hefty. That's why they sound so good. These, uh, these old tone rings are good. Uh, you know, this banjo impresses me in uh, being such high quality. Uh, and you know, you hear things about the 60s. Now, you know, the one piece flange is a little bit of a problem. If you can get these tiny screws here out of the bracket then you can get the flange off because the flange has to come this way and that brackets in the way so there's three of them because those are what the resonator bolts thumb bolts or thumb screws go to they go right through there and hold the resonator on but uh, 
now they need to be removed so we're gonna see what we can do got some screwdriver here and I've learned from experience ooh that's real easy that's nice on the gold stars I work on sometimes these are stuck 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 I mean really stuck that one was beautiful oh yes <laughs> My worst fears are for nothing, you know? I like that. I wonder if Gold Star may have put some glue in there or something, I'm telling you. Oh man, I spent hours trying to find ways to get those screws out, heat them up and uh, get pliers and get them out just a little bit and try something else. They are a major pain in the neck, but this, that's beautiful. I mean, that's fantastic. And now the single piece flange comes right off and we're gonna put that aside. Um, so everything on the pot is now completely 100% taken apart. And uh, you know, I don't dunk this in water or anything. The rim, I treat uh, very uh, gingerly and I just use a little cleaner on it, a mild uh, something like a wood soap on it and uh, just clean it up maybe just a little water and we'll see on a rag you know not uh, immersion or <laughs> that kind of water nothing uh, nothing too extreme so we're gonna save all of these screws and reuse them Wow I'm I am more than you won't know how happy I am about the ease of removing those brackets that that is enough to make me shake in my boots and uh, it was nothing. <laughs> yeah, I've done so many uh, gold stars that uh, probably 20 or more I've uh, done restoration work on. And they're the same instrument. I mean, they really are not different in any way. They're exactly the same. Um, nasty. Wow, that is... Woo, that's a lot, of, a lot of years on there, man. I'll tell you that. So uh, we're going to take that to the uh, sink, actually, and I'll... I'll bring you along. Now we've got the neck to talk about, and I'm not going to talk more than I work. Um, first of all, I need a little screwdriver. I'm going to remove this Ode brand. I've got this little screwdriver kit I've used for many, many years, and it's just been great. And you know what? I've never lost a bit. I've probably got 30 bits for this and uh, I have them all I have them all oh, and these are coming out nicely these are slotted screws I don't care for slotted screws much when I get this uh, neck ready for further work probably in the next video and this thing that damages the banjo really i mean look at the corrosion on this and the corrosion has uh has gotten underneath it and transferred to the to the neck Gotta, gotta get in there and give it some love. So, gonna stash this away. And now to the tuners. Um, you know, I, I was going to mention these things. Uh, here, I'm looking at the camera. These things, uh, I didn't mention them in the last video. I said, oh, I'll tell you what these are, and then I didn't do it. So I apologize for that, but um, Back in the 60s, uh, Earl Scruggs was using, and in the 50s, I'm not sure when he quit using them, but he had what's called cam tuners, and uh, they add an extra tuning peg to your headstock, and uh, what you do is you turn it, and it, it moves against the string like this, and it makes it go up the, the tension, uh, rise and fall, so you can uh, adjust them so they're very precise, and you can tune these two strings which uh, this, these um, strings would pass the cams 
and it's I can show you I guess it's maybe easier but in the back of Earl Scruggs book uh, Earl Scruggs and the five string banjo which I have on my website you can see in that book instructions how to make them and when I was 13 years old I did it to my Alvarez and I uh, installed them the scary part is drilling through a headstock for the first time but you have to you have to drill through it in order to install cam tuners but then later Earl Scruggs and um, and uh, Bill Keith got together and designed these um, style detuners which do the same thing but they're unitized yeah, since they're unitized, they have um, cams or some other device inside that allows you to turn them and they stop exactly where you want them. And you don't have to drill holes, but he decided evidently, uh, Mike's dad did, that uh, he would upgrade and get some of these expensive cam uh, camless tuners, or however they work, uh, but they're not the cam style tuners. What was I, uh, funny when I when I took this out of the case? I said, "Oh, this is this is interesting." I saw these in the photographs. Doll eyes is what he put in here to fill the holes. These are actually from like a stuffed animal or something. You can see in the back that they've got button backs on them, so uh, <laughs> that's what they are. And I'll be removing those uh, and uh, maybe plugging this with something a little less um, creepy. I don't know. Does it look like it's? staring at you or anything I don't it's I don't know it's it's unique and it's interesting and it's kind of funny so uh, yeah the nut on this is not chipped or broken Let's get it on camera the nut is in good shape uh, the frets you can really see now are just gone and these frets are just in terrible shape so you know an argument for doing work I'll tell you some people just don't want to ever fix their instrument but you know originality uh it's kind of like a, what i would say about a car uh, an antique car which i'm kind of into those too so i may make some car references other than this but uh, originality is important on an old car right and uh a joke is the selling point that it still has the original air in the tires which uh, is just supposed to be funny but <clears throat> You know, you have to do something at some point. So anyway, uh, we're going to make this really playable. And those those worn out frets are going to be out of here. Now, I did find some fret wire and it came in. I could go with narrower. Um, I know some guys that put in really the jumbo frets you'll find on a Fender guitar. Um, and those are kind of nice to have. Now, these are wider. These are actually along that direction, so they should play real smooth. And uh, we've got the new fret wire, so we're going to um, put in the closest match to these that I could find. 0.97 is the width of that crown. Now I'm pressing against the fretboard, so I'm getting right down to the base. And I'm getting 0.97, and that's, that's what my new frets are. So we're looking, it's the same, it's the same fret wire. I don't know about the tang yet, but we'll get to that uh, when we get to that. Okay, you know, if you're real careful, you can use an adjustable wrench or an end wrench or even a box end. These are not even the same size across the board. We've got two different kinds of tuners here. We've got the Keith tuners. And you just go slowly, and that's the thing about this kind of work. You just have to do what is the most safe and be very careful about it. Now these are a little smaller, but that's okay. We'll just, just get it to fit and give it a little twist. That's all you need. Talking about spinning a tuner, the, the little um, brad is out of the wood now, so it just rotates but uh, since we're doing rebuild work, if that had stripped, which it didn't, then uh, I would be able to remedy that in my operations here. But uh, when I do put tuners back in, I always look for the little hole in the back. And these have several, <laughs> but uh, we can see there's a hole here. I think that's probably the probably the little spike or brad that goes in. But you just rotate it carefully and get it to line up. And you can feel where it is. 
the lacquer on this is so baked and I do believe that this was leaning against uh, near a fireplace and it just destroyed the lacquer all around and uh, where it isn't completely gone it is um, really looking all bubbly and stuff especially the back of the headstock and put that here so yeah uh, this though you know lacquer is a pretty good finish now it's not it's not as strong as the polyurethanes they use today actually Gibson doesn't use polyurethane never has and to this day they use nitrocellulose lacquer which is what I like to use so um, it's perfect for me because we're gonna go with that but I can tell you right now I can see that the color in this is mostly from the lacquer itself and not from a wood stain I see the wood uh, looks almost uh, natural colored underneath the dirt um, and there's plenty of that but just a little cleaning of the wood and it doesn't change really doesn't change color other than that uh, black wood come uh, black dirt coming off the wood uh, but I will show you here that just my fingernail is strong enough to gouge this finish off it flakes off just touching it so the finish is trashed and uh, it's come off in big chunks down here so so much for that anyway uh, we're gonna get to that well, that's going to do it for today. We got pretty far with this, but there's a lot more to go. So be sure to like and subscribe and hit the bell so that you'll see the next video when it comes up. I'm going to try making these on a regular basis. So we're going to get through this uh, Gibson Mastertone restoration here pretty fast. And uh, we've got a lot to do. So join us next time here at Beyond Guitars.